Hey, welcome. So today we're actually not in front of a car. I'm not actually working on the car right now. I'm actually standing in front of a wiring diagram because I want to share with you the process that I take in, uh, in diagnosing an electrical concern on a vehicle that's not something I have to get the lab scope out for or whatever. Now, I know that seems crazy, right? Everything I do on this channel seems to always have to revolve around that lab scope, right? Well, this vehicle today was a uh, 2006 Chevy Colorado with an, uh, a blower motor concern. The blower motor was in-op. It was hot out, the customer wasn't happy, the blower motor wasn't working. You know how that story always goes, right? 225,000 miles, the resistors knew, the connectors knew, so on and so on and so on. We have an electrical problem. We should approach our electrical problems really always the same, same way. And this one being a relatively simplistic circuit with just the control panel that you change your speeds, we don't really need any special tools, just like a horn circuit or a headlight circuit or a bunch of the other circuits on our cars. We're not looking at a very precise signal that we need a lab scope for. I diagnosed this vehicle using a traditional incandescent test light and a fused jumper lead that you could build for a couple bucks at a parts store. So I'm gonna take you guys through the process that I go through when I'm diagnosing this. Let's get right into it here. All right, so here's our diagram. Uh, there's a lot going on in here, but not a lot uh, in terms of what we actually care about. We have a blower motor right here in the diagram, and the complaint is that it doesn't work at all. No speeds, high speed, low speed, nothing happens at all. All right, so, what I typically like to do is test the easiest thing first, which is probably going to be at the blower motor, which is gonna give us the most information. Testing at the load, the blower motor is our load in the circuit. Testing there gives us a good idea of the, the circuit integrity. Now there might be a lot of people out there that want to check this fuse first or check this relay first. Yeah, you could do that. Find the fuse box under the hood, find those relays. That's not a problem but you've only checked a portion of the circuit. What about everything else that's over on this side, okay? I don't like to have to do any testing that isn't incredibly efficient. And that's where testing directly at the load can be incredibly efficient. So I took my test light and I went under the dash, relatively easy to get to on this blower motor, and I took one lead of the test light and I plugged it right into that connector. I unplugged the blower motor and I went right into the brown wire at the connector with one end of the test light. And then I grabbed a little T-pin and I stuck that T-pin into pin two and I hooked that up to my test light. All right, so now I have one in there, one in there. I turned the key on. When I turn the key on, my test light should light up nice and bright. I've substituted the blower motor with my own load, with my test light the light did not light up. So I'm either missing power, which leads me back to there, or I'm missing the ground path. So I'm already at the blower motor itself. I'm already here. It'd be pretty simple to take that T-pin out of number two, out of that uh, orange wire, and go ahead and take my test light and hook it to a ground underneath the, uh, the blower motor. So now I'm taking power and it's flowing or should be flowing, down this brown wire into my test light. My test light is grounded under the dash, and at that point, my test light lights up. That tells me that battery power is flowing in, it's flowing through the relay, it's flowing through the blower fuse, 41 itself, it's flowing all the way through this wire to where my test light is hooked up right there. So our power side is good. Now, because the test light didn't light up, I have to assume then that our ground side is bad. So I know I'm missing ground on my orange wire. So if I follow it in the diagram here, I'm led to splice 202. Now I'm not gonna go tear apart the dash to find splice 202, because that sounds like a pain to do, but it could be a problem. The resistor is not going to be my next point of testing, because if my blower motor worked on high speed, that bypasses the resistor entirely. We're not using the resistor at all. So if it worked on high speed, I'd be testing at the blower motor resistor, but it doesn't work on high speed. Okay? So it could be splice 202 that is the issue. It's not gonna be the resistor, although the resistor could still, I guess, be bad in the circuit. So we go to here, we flow through at high speed, and we end up at ground. So our problem could be inside of the HVAC control module, which is really just a fancy word for the switch assembly on this vehicle. So it could be inside of that, inside of our dotted line box here, which um, 
everything that falls inside of that. Problem could be inside of there, or our problem could be somewhere in the wiring from here to here to G106. That's where our problem can be. Um, or I guess it could be somewhere in the wiring between pin two of our connector and G106. So really, we're looking at a lot of uh, real estate here for an electrical problem. Where's the next best place to test? So what I did to be the most efficient as possible, I went ahead and pulled out the HVAC control module, which is just really easy on here. Um, but I went ahead and pulled that out and I disconnected this connector, this guy right here, C1. I disconnected that connector and I took my fuse jumper lead, took my fuse jumper lead and I attached that fuse jumper lead with the connector disconnected between pin E, the orange wire, and I fed that directly to pin B, our black wire. So what that did, that just bypassed our entire control unit. So in that case, if I have the key on and I'm feeding battery positive through our ignition relay, feed it down to there, I should end up with a ground path for the blower motor through this path here. We basically just made a shorter path for electricity to flow by taking the controller out of it, and the blower motor still did not run. All right, so next best thing to do is I took my jumper lead, took it off of B, and I attached it to just a ground that was sitting behind the dash. So now I'm taking our circuit and I'm flowing ground from pin E to somewhere random just sitting behind the, behind the dash there. And the blower motor comes on high speed. Great. So now I know that the blower motor works. I know that my wiring from the blower motor itself right here all the way to pin E is good. That's fantastic. What's next? Well, what you can actually do now, and what I did next was disconnect the connect, I mean, sorry, I reconnected the connector at the HVAC module, and I took my jumper lead, stuck it into pin B, and I stuck the other end to that ground under the dash. Now, I'm just creating a shorter path to ground. Blower motor runs on high, because that's where I happen to have my switch at that moment. I turn my switch to medium, medium one, medium two, low, and off and it works on all those speeds. So now I know my controller, HVAC control module is working, I know my resistor is working, I know all of this wiring is good. My problem now has to be between where I jumped this to ground and G106. So I have wiring running in the dash with connector C1 pin B. I have that wiring running, it runs to connector C201, and for those of you that don't know, C 201 is going to be an interior connector because it's the uh, two. Two series connectors are in the interior, typically under the dash. And then it runs to G106. The 100 series are typically under the hood of the vehicle. So I have wiring traveling from the dashboard HVAC uh, switch assembly all the way to underneath the hood of the vehicle. So I'm not going to go breaking into it at any point here. My goal now is to check out G106, and that's exactly what I did happens to be on the passenger side of the vehicle. I went ahead and unbolted it, and immediately upon unbolting it and moving it around, the blower motor started running. That tells me that we have a problem with G106. Now, G106 is what's considered a splice pack. Basically, that means that there is one major ground wire running from G106 to body ground, typically, and then there's a bunch of ground wires coming into that splice pack, and then there's usually a blade that sits inside of there that kind of connects all those wires together. So what I did, I took it apart and there's corrosion inside of there. As you can see here, the terminals aren't exactly clean. Um, looking at it further, I went ahead and did a pin tension test on pin F and the pin is loose. I can wiggle the wire and I can get the blower motor to turn on and turn off. So pretty simple fix. All I had to do was de-pin the G106 splice pack. I pulled the pin out of the bottom I kind of pushed the terminals back together so they had a tight fit again, put a little dielectric grease in there, hooked it all back together, and the problem is fixed. A simple ground didn't need a resistor, didn't need a blower motor, never had to bother checking the fuses. All of this is the way to properly diagnose a vehicle. It's about finding the shortest steps to get to the end result. So that's the 
the thought process, the mentality that leads me to um, fixing, fixing the problem on, on a relatively easy circuit um, when dealing with electrical faults. So uh, yeah, vehicles fixed with a simple cleaning up of the ground and repairing the terminal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, enjoyed my process that I take when going through a wiring diagram itself. Um, thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please give us that, that thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, clicking that little bell icon will give you notifications uh, when we publish our next video. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for being here. And as always, happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you.